There's a handful of topics to go over, including Dominic Mysterio, Sasha Banks, and another WWE superstar that opened up about being forced to leave. So let's start things off today with this Dominic Mysterio story. Dominic Mysterio is now a grown man, and he's in the early stages of his WWE career. Although Dominic has always appeared to us as Rey Mysterio's innocent son, there was a few times that Dom got himself into some massive trouble. So let's take a look at one of those incidents. Dominic Mysterio was recently on the Chasing Glory podcast and opened up about one of the times that he got punished. He had this to say via the Chasing Glory podcast. I did something in school I probably should not have done, and my punishment was to get my hair cut off. When I played football, I loved having the name Goldilocks because I would hit people really hard during the game, and they would not expect it from a kid with long blonde hair. I loved having my hair long. I always had a love for knives since I was a kid. I didn't realize I had a little one in my backpack, and one of my buddies had a bigger one in his backpack and we were doing a trade on the bus. I went to the bathroom and I had it. I was admiring it. Someone walked in and he went and told on us. So Dominic got into massive trouble for being busted with it. He wasn't doing anything wrong or getting into any fights at school. He just loved collecting them, trading them, and so on. But in the eyes of the school administrator, they looked at that as being extremely dangerous. So Rey Mysterio and Angie were called in after Dominic was busted. Ray and Angie knew that they had to do something to teach Dominic a lesson in order for this to never happen again. So, what did they do as a punishment? It's probably something that you aren't expecting at all, but Ray and Angie took his precious long hair away from him. Ray Mysterio had this to say about that situation. What are we, Ray and Angie, going to do? We ended up taking away his hair, which was really long at the time. My wife and I said that's what he adored at the time. Normally, you take away something they really like. The hair was his look. For him, the hair was everything. So that was the price that Dominic had to pay for his school incident. Since his hair was everything to him, Ray and Angie decided to take that away from him. And it seems like Ray and Angie made the right move there because it really taught Dominic a lesson and shaped him up to be what he is today. So that was a very interesting story. It was also a big week for Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks and Bayley's title match on SmackDown from a few weeks ago pulled in some of the highest ratings WWE has seen in quite a while. Sasha and Bayley's opening match on SmackDown brought in 2.5 million viewers. SmackDown and Raw almost never see those kind of numbers anymore, so that was a huge accomplishment for Sasha and Bayley. But as we know now, Sasha and Bailey's feud has now reached the end and it's fully complete. It was such a great story. It was full of ups and downs and just a fantastic storytelling. Bailey confirmed the end of the feud on Twitter by saying this, I'm done with you for now because this isn't over until I say it's over. After all, I've always thrived without you. Sasha Banks had a deeper response to the end of the storyline and had a lot to say during an interview with Stephanie Chase of Digital Spy. I am extremely happy with the Hell in a Cell match. Bailey is absolutely my favorite opponent of all time, and it went just exactly how I wanted. To have that Hell in a Cell with her was incredible. I love that match. I loved that outcome of the match. For my match to be so well received and for fans to say that I had the match of the night it's just incredible to be a part of this women's evolution where just non-stop fans talk about the women and how incredible that we do. This whole storyline with Bailey, it was a long time coming. And there were times in the past where we saw it stop and go. But in the long run, we really had to have the fans see this long, long friendship, which you don't really get to see in the WWE too often. So, Sasha brings up a lot of great points. Was the storyline and their friendship really long and stretched out? Sure, it was. But that's part of what made this storyline so unique and special. Like Sasha said, you don't really get to see those long friendships play out on WWE television. WWE usually breaks teams up out of nowhere with no real build-up and no real follow-up. Go see the Iconics and Tucker and Otis for examples of that. We didn't get any build-up or follow-up to those long-time tag team partners splitting up. 
But in Sasha and Bailey's case, we had it all. We had the huge buildup that took several months. And we have that follow-up after their breakup as well. You don't get to see that quite often anymore. So that was a big deal and a big accomplishment for their story. So Sasha and Bailey are done for now, but you better believe that they'll cross paths again in the near future, especially when fans eventually return. Sasha Banks also had another big headlining story in the news this week. And that's the fact that she officially made her first appearance in The Mandalorian. Sasha will now be a recurring character in the huge blockbuster show from Disney. I was very excited about it. She even watched the episode with her closest friends and family. So it's been a really big week for Sasha Banks. However, she'll have to turn her attention to Carmella, who seems to be her next challenger. WWE superstar was forced to leave WWE. This superstar was Lillian Garcia. Lillian Garcia was the voice of WWE for so many years, but she just disappeared from the company one day back in 2016, causing fans to wonder what happened to her. Lillian Garcia recently revealed during an interview with Chris Van Vliet that she had to step away from WWE in 2016 because her father was very ill. But during that time away from WWE, Lillian Garcia really took time to dive more into her idea to start up a podcast, and that's how Chasing Glory came into existence. Chasing Glory was independent for a while, but like we've seen in recent weeks, it appears that WWE has brought the Chasing Glory podcast over to the WWE Network. So that's a big move for Lillian, and it brings even more eyes onto her hit show. Lastly, we are looking closer and closer to The Undertaker's final farewell, and he's been doing a lot of media runs and talking about several interesting topics. He recently praised Bray Wyatt's Fiend character and called it the strongest character in WWE. Taker also encouraged Bray Wyatt to not be afraid to say no to the writers if he feels like they're making a bad move for his character as well. Undertaker also had this to say when looking back at how he was able to stay relevant and on top of WWE for 30 years. It's hard to imagine that 30 years have already come and gone. It feels like just yesterday as I was making that long walk at Survivor Series in 1990. A lot of that is just trying to stay relevant and try to keep that lighting. It's all on the fans, actually. Regardless of injuries and travel schedules, it's always been for the fans. It's a true pleasure to travel around the world and see different people and different cultures and see how your character and persona affects different people. Everyone has their own story, their Undertaker story. Whoever their favorite wrestler might be, it's always interesting and it's always motivating to get out there and keep yourself relevant so that your fan base is appreciative of what you are doing. Undertaker will have his final farewell at Survivor Series, but he's still signed with WWE until he's 70 years of age. So, we'll see what's next for Undertaker and WWE. There's also rumors and reports that Undertaker wants a coaching job in WWE, so we'll see if that comes true. But what are your thoughts on today's wrestling news? Leave your comments below, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys.